In a tree service business, there are different dynamics happening, as you well know, than in a lot of other service type businesses. There's higher risk involved, so your insurance premiums are different, <laughs> let's put it that way. There's a lot more equipment involved than in most other businesses. The skill set of your team is really important, and having team members that develop that skill set and want to stay with the business instead of starting their own business doing this stuff, that's a little bit of a trick, figuring that out. So I'm a business coach. I've worked with a few different tree service businesses to help them grow in, in several different ways. I've learned a whole lot, and I just wanted to share particularly some perspective about increasing bottom line profit with you. Um, I'm all about education and just sharing everything that I can with everybody that I can because the whole goal is I want you to win. I want you, whatever you've experienced before now, I want you to win two times, five times, ten times that much when it comes to your financial freedom and your time freedom. And yeah, there's, it takes a little bit of time to shift some things, but shifting the profitability of the business does not have to take that much time. And I just want to give you some perspective on that if you're open to it. So any anytime we're discussing perspective and, and doing some education, this is of course an acronym. So EPIC stands for education. Every time I get in front of someone, I want to make sure that there's some additional education or a new perspective on uh, some things you already know about that'll be useful for you. The P is for planning. Once we get educated, it helps us to plan more effectively, right? We can drop some old strategies or ways of doing things and adopt some new ones that are going to make a difference in the business. So planning is part of this. The I is inspiration. You know, once there's clarity about how to do some things differently and again, uh, create more financial freedom and time freedom, that should be inspiring for most business owners. So I'm hoping that's you too. I hope you find yourself inspired to, hey, there's, uh, there's some opportunity here that I didn't realize before. And then what it all comes down to is the C stands for commitment. None of this will take your business forward in a new way until you commit to doing something about it. There's a great quote by Brad Sugars who founded the organization that I work with. The biggest risk you can take is to do nothing. So what he's talking about is commitment, right? Once you've got a new perspective with education, you've put some planning into place to really wrap your head around how to implement some of the new ideas. You're inspired to take it forward. It all, it all actually moves forward when you take action, when you are committed to moving forward. So, and the B stands for bring the energy. So hopefully you've got some energy uh, to share and I'm certainly gonna be sharing my energy with you and some perspective today. So for some perspective on what we're talking about, I wanted to really, I guess, dig into for a few minutes, the what we call the ladder of entrepreneurship, okay? So this is all about what role you are playing in your business at the time. So we all start out, well, most of us, uh, most of us start out as an employee in a business. And at some point, we think, hey, I can do it better than this guy, or, you know, I don't feel like I'm getting a fair uh, fair deal here so I want to go start my own thing or maybe you just are inspired to start your own business it doesn't have to be always in relationship to your employer but uh, at some point you decide to start your own thing so you start a tree service business and at that point you're self-employed you filed for your LLC with the state and you've got your EIN number with the IRS you're official you're on paper and you're self-employed so you get out there and hustle and do this tree work. And at some point, right, you need a team member or two to help you do some of this stuff. So you hire maybe your first part-time person or your first two part-time people to help you with certain tree projects that you're working on. And eventually you realize, hey, I've got to really develop some management skills here to help move the team forward in the business. So you start to wear the hat or you start to assume the role or the identity of manager for your business. 
you know, you've got a couple of team members and now it's time to become a pretty strong manager to be able to manage the team, the small team you've got. So what typically happens, I see it over and over, what typically happens is there's a invisible line right here and we're gonna come back to that and talk about it in a few minutes. So I'll just leave that there. So at some point you realize that, hey, I could hire a manager to manage the team and as the owner of the business, I really need to grow into that ownership role for the business so that I can think about, think more high, high level, uh, have a little bit longer vision, you know, thinking quarterly and annually versus daily and weekly in the business with what you're focused on. So when you put a manager or a project manager or general manager or whatever you call that role, when you put that person in place to manage the team for you, largely, that frees up your time and bandwidth and energy as the owner to actually do owner stuff instead of being on the tools and in the trucks every day. So when you're the owner and you're really in that role, you are using the cash flow from the business to purchase more team members, to invest in more team members and grow the business through your managers. Okay. The next step on the ladder of entrepreneurship is investor. So at some point you've built the business to a point where you've got plenty for your current lifestyle. And then you've also got additional cash flow and profitability to be able to invest in, in uh, make other investments, right? So that could be you expanding what you're doing with your current business. It could be acquiring other tree service businesses to roll into this one. Could be that you, you know, make real estate investments or uh, stock market investments. You know, invest, investments can go a couple of different directions, but the point is, once you have that cash flow and profitability, now you're in a position to be thinking further down the road with the way that you're putting those dollars to work for you. And entrepreneur, one achieves the role or the identity of entrepreneur, really when you've got those investments working for you and you've really got a whole next level of financial resources and time resources and your energy to be able to invest in some bigger ideas that really make a more of a community level impact. So where are you on the ladder of entrepreneurship right now and where do you want to be? That's really something that you need to be honest with yourself about and identify so that you can aspire to what's next for you, okay? Coming back to the red dotted line, I like to think about this in relationship to that red dotted line. What is the currency you're using in each of those roles, okay? Below the red dotted line, we're trading time, for money. When you're an employee, you get paid hourly. When you're self-employed, you do the work and you get paid for it. When you're a manager, you don't get paid unless you show up to manage the team, right? So you're really trading time for money in all three of those roles. This is what I've seen over and over. This is the most difficult transition is to go from manager to owner as far as the role and identity that you're serving the business with. Because this is where that changes. When you're an owner, you are trading your profit for your time. The profitability of the business allows you to invest in new team members, which buys you back your time from the business. Like I said, at some point, if you're going to keep progressing up the ladder of entrepreneurship here, you've got to control your time differently. And that's got to come through team, and the team can't happen until you got profit really in a strong position, right? So when, you're, when you actually get to that owner role, you're trading profit and you know, using those profit dollars to buy back your time from the business. Investor this is where you use the cash flow to make investments moving forward, right? So you've protected your time, and now that you've protected your time, 
you can use the additional cash flow that keeps building in the business to start funneling. You've got, actually got time and energy to think about how do I want to make investments outside of the business or to expand the business further. And you've got the resources to do that, time and money. Okay. The currency that an entrepreneur uses, you know, along the way you've developed some relationships with some cool people, some people that are where you want to be. You, you, you continue to meet new people that have, have made it, have gotten past that point. When you're an entrepreneur, really what you're trading for currency is ideas and relationships. You know, I mentioned this is where you're really thinking about community level impact. So what is the community that you'd like to make a positive impact on? Pooling your resources, putting your ideas together and leaning into those relationships, those key relationships that can help make an idea actually happen in, an, in a community, that's, that's, on, that's really entrepreneurship, okay? So again, where are you now? and where do you aspire to be? That's something you need to uh, think about and identify. So to get from here up to owner, like I said, you've gotta have profitability there. Fair enough. So what I'd like to share with you now is in a tree service business, some perspective to specifically increase your bottom line profit, which will make the financial resources available for you to invest in team and keep moving the thing forward, okay? So let me dig into that with you for a minute. So growing your bottom line profitability. That's what we're really here to talk about. The most simple formula to think about when it comes to profit, sales minus expenses equals profit. That's the easiest, most simplistic way to describe what we're after. So to take it a step further, to break it out just a little bit further, another way to write this down is Sales minus our variable costs or variable expenses equals gross profit. Gross profit minus our fixed expenses equals our net profit. Okay, why is it important to understand that? So as the business grows and you do more and more business, your variable expenses increase along the way and generally speaking like there's some exceptions to this but generally speaking along the way the fixed expenses don't really increase that much along the way for instance if you sell a hundred thousand dollars of tree work versus a hundred and thirty thousand dollars of tree work in two different months you're still paying the same insurance premium like that fixed expense doesn't change uh, the payments on your equipment those don't change whether you do 100 or 130K. Your marketing spend probably doesn't need to change for that to happen. You know, so your utilities that you pay probably doesn't need to change. What does change is, you know, whether you're doing $100,000 of work in a month or $130,000 of work in a month, what does need to change is how much you're investing in labor hours and fuel costs, you know, so there's some materials and some labor associated with how much work you're doing and those are the variable costs. That all being said, the most important number in your tree service business to focus on is gross profit. I just want to be real clear about that because there are very few people in business, even very well established businesses, that truly understand gross profit and how powerful it is. And I'm guessing that in your QuickBooks or whatever software you use, I'm guessing that your gross profit is not reported accurately. In, in six or seven years of doing this now, hundreds of businesses I've sat down and talked with, one business had their gross profit uh, reported correctly in their accounting software. So I'll just leave that there. We can talk more about it later, but gross profit is super, super important for your business. Net profit is no doubt what we're after. However, increases to net profit really come from the increases to gross profit, okay? The more that we increase gross profit, 
without the fixed expenses increasing along the way, that increase in gross profit drops straight to the bottom line. If, if you do $100,000 worth of work in one month, and the next month you do $130,000 of work, whatever that additional profitability on that $30,000 was, that profit stri uh, drops straight to the bottom line. So I'll give you some uh, more context in a minute, but gross profit is truly the most important number. So you need to think about how to get that accurate number in your business, first of all. Like we can't effectively manage what we haven't measured first. This is one of the first things in every business that I work with that we focus on measuring and getting accurate and understanding really well because that is truly where we can massively grow the bottom line of the business. And the more profit we have, the easier it is to move up this ladder to the next level, okay? Of course, it all starts with profit. Profit has got to happen before we can really grow the business and move it forward. So now I'm gonna to shift to a screen view where you can see an Excel spreadsheet that I walk through how we approach increasing gross profit in your tree service business, okay? I'm gonna have some numbers in there that are kind of representative of tree work and what, that, what it might look like and how to increase that year over year for a couple of years, okay? So I'll switch to that right now. Okay, let me walk you through the methodology here for the steps that we take that actually creates profit in business, all right? So we're after a few results specifically. So the results we're after is we want customers, we're looking for to, revenue, you know, to generate revenue, and we're looking to create gross profit which after fixed expenses gives us net profit, just like we were looking at on the flip chart a moment ago. So the way we get to customers is we have people call in or maybe they fill out a form on our website or maybe there's a referral that comes from a past customer. So we have leads come in and then once we're in conversation with those leads, there's a conversion rate associated with how many of those that we close, right? So number of leads times conversion rate gives us total number of customers that we get to work with in our tree business. Those customers do business with us ever so frequently across the course of a year. Now in, in tree work, most of those customers, if it's residential customers, most of those it's gonna be one transaction in the year. But like if you're working with an HOA for instance and serving them, they might have you come out four or five times in a year to do work uh, for their HOA. So there would be five or six transactions in a year for that type of customer. So it might not be 1.0, but it'll be close to one on average across your business, most likely. Um, average dollar sale is, again, it's the average of uh, all the work you do. So some of those HOAs might have bigger jobs. Um, some of them might have smaller jobs. But if the vast majority of your work is residential, then those jobs can have a range, you know, it depends on the services they're, they're purchasing from you too. So we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute, but there's an average dollar sale. So total customers multiplied by average number of transactions multiplied by average dollar sale brings us to the revenue that we bring in over the course of a year. After we pay for our variable expenses, the variable expenses in a tree service business would include labor, that's involved with delivering those services, um, any fuel that's involved, any materials that are used while we are actually uh, serving those customers, those are the variable expenses. So revenue, after we take out the, re the variable expenses, <clears throat> leaves us with gross profit. And then out of gross profit, we take the fixed expenses that we talked about. So fixed expenses, again, that's insurance, uh, marketing budget. If we have an admin person that we pay for, their salary will be in fixed expenses. Um, if we rent space to store equipment or have an office space that we pay for, um, these kind of things, that's, those are fixed expenses. So gross profit minus fixed expenses brings us to net profit. 
all right? So what is the activity that each of these five areas, you see the one, two, three, four, five here, what activity do those areas represent? So leads, that's our marketing. How strong is our marketing and how many leads does our marketing produce? But just as importantly, what quality of leads does our marketing produce? So we could have a thousand leads that half of which are not desirable or we could have a thousand leads that 800 are desirable. You know, it depends on the quality of the marketing work we're doing. And we'll talk about that a little bit more in a minute. So number of leads, that's marketing. <clears throat> Conversion rate is all about the sales process. You know, how does that conversation go? What do you include in the conversation? What do you not include in the conversation? How do you, how well do you educate your, your uh, prospect? on how you approach doing this work versus your competitors you know this is where you can really stand out and make all of your other competitors look uh, undesirable in comparison to going with you so there's a lot of ways that we can improve your sales process and that's that's what leads to the conversion rate uh, average number of transactions <clears throat> again that's the nature in, in a tree service business it's the nature of the customers you're working with. So residential customers, like we said, generally speaking, are going to be one transaction in a year. An HOA or a property manager that you work for might have multiple in a year. Um, and the reason they would call you back to do work again with them is because of the experience you created for them. You know, the, because of the experience they had working with you the first time. So the better the experience that you provide and the experience of uh, providing that service, the higher likelihood they're going to call you back and there's going to be more transactions, right? Average dollar sale is all about pricing strategy. It's about your product assortment. You know, what all services do you provide? You know, is it uh, pruning and cutting back trees? Is it cutting down trees? Is it uh, hauling off? waste from trees is it stump grinding plant health care you know all these different services bring in a different average dollar sale so the mix of your products or products and services that you offer will contribute to what your average dollar sale looks like um, how many services you sell at one time in a bundle how you package that together that has an impact on your average dollar sale and then also what customers came in to the top to the top with your marketing the type of customers you're working with will uh, indicate what kind of average dollar sale you have too so there's uh, several variables at play there and then when it comes to gross margin this is really about your efficiency and your team's efficiency so for instance if it takes your team 10 hours 10 labor hours to take care of a job and then you do a similar job later and they're more efficient so they get it done in nine hours your gross profit increases it took you less labor hours to invest in to get the same job done and bring the same money in so the, it's all about efficiency efficiency of labor and efficiency of materials and then fixed expenses of course you know we want to be fiscally responsible we want to be responsible with what we're spending However, reducing expenses is not really the answer for increasing profitability. The big opportunity is the five ways that lead to gross profit here, okay? So let me put in a couple of numbers. What we're looking at here is this is the last 12 months in a, in a hypothetical tree service business. This tree service business has two crews and they are bringing in 30 leads per week, okay? So 30 leads per week in a 50-week work year. You know, we're taking a couple of weeks off, hopefully, for vacation. So 50 weeks times 30 leads, that's 1,500 leads. And we're going to say that we convert, we actually win 30% of those estimates that we give out. So 1,500 times 30% means that we're working with 450 customers in the last 12 months. And on average, you know, the vast majority of those customers were residential, uh, just one, one uh, transaction in the year. 
There were a few exceptions to that. There are some people that did more than one transaction with us, but basically it was one. So 1.05 is our average number of transactions we're using. And on average, the average dollar sale is $1,500 per invoice, okay? So 450 times 1.05 average number of transactions times $1,500 average dollar sale that means that in the last year, this business brought in $708,750. And we're going to say after paying for the labor and the materials involved with providing those services, we retained 50% of that $708,000. So our gross profit is $354,375. And we're also going to say that Hey, there's, a, there's some pretty significant equipment payments being made each month. So between equipment payments, insurance payments, uh, marketing, you know, utilities that might exist that we pay for, and let's see what else. Um, if there's an admin person helping us uh, manage the office, we're going to say that that costs the business $270,000. So $354,000 minus the set 270 dollars this business at the end of that this past year had eighty four thousand three hundred and seventy five dollars to move the business forward into the next year okay so in this business fifteen hundred leads is uh, not too shabby however the ex the example I want to show you is we're actually going to target getting fewer leads as crazy as that sounds, we're going to target getting fewer leads but higher quality leads. Because 1,500 leads, that's great, but 30% conversions on the low side of what we want. And we can change that. We can improve that. So for number of leads, we're going to focus on quality over quantity. And we're really going to focus down on the conversion rate. So we're going to highlight this in orange because this is going to be a key area of focus is conversion rate. Average number of transactions, we're going to say that that's not the most relevant thing that we're trying to improve this, this uh, next 12 months. So we're going to focus heavier instead on average dollar sale. So average dollar sale, there's meat on the bone there. So we can improve that. Part of improving this number is going to be getting a higher quality lead to begin with and converting them with a higher, uh, a higher success rate. Okay, And then gross margin, we're going to say that that might increase a little bit over time, but that's not going to be the primary focus. The primary focus for the example that I'm giving is going to be these two areas, conversion rate and average dollar sale. Now your business is going to have different different dynamics happening. Every business is a little different, right? So it could be that your lead flow is really low in your business and that's what we need to focus on is improving the marketing. So just understand this is just an example I'm putting together just to illustrate the power of looking at these five areas independently and what they can do for us when we focus on the right areas over time, all right? So let me go to the next year and look at these numbers. Again, I'm going to highlight conversion rate and average dollar sale. These are the two primary numbers that we're looking to increase. So the last 12 months, 30 leads per week. In the next 12 months, our target is to reduce that to 25 leads per week, which means that we've got 1,250 down from 1,500. 1,250 leads. But the key work that we're going to do is really improve our sales process okay we're gonna to put together materials that uh, I guess give our prospects a lot more confidence in what we're bringing to the table versus your competitors okay so we're gonna say that over the course of the year we increase our conversion rate from 30 percent to 45 percent all right so 1250 times 45 percent means that we've got 563 customers up from 450 all right Average number of transactions, let's say that we have a couple of uh, property managers come on board, so it, 
very slightly increases, but not much. Again, the next big area of focus is average dollar sales. So we're going to work hard to, part of it's the quality of the leads that are coming in, like I said, but also it's the positioning and part of uh, the sales process that can lead to a higher average dollar sale. So it was last year, over the last 12 months, 1500 the average that we're targeting for the next 12 months is $1,800 average dollar sale. So 563 customers times 1.1 average number of transactions times $1,800 average dollar sale brings us from $708,000 up to $1,113,750. That is a big jump year over year and absolutely possible too if we just focus on these two key areas primarily. Now, when, when average dollar sale increases, it also, a byproduct of that is it also increases slightly the gross margin. So we're gonna say that goes from 50 to 55% based on this number increasing. So our gross profit increases from 354,000 up to $612,000. Again, a huge, huge increase. Now the fixed expenses, we do want to assume that they're going to increase a bit. You know, so some of the reasons this number might increase is maybe the admin person that's running our office for us gets, an, gets a pay raise. And maybe our insurance increases a little bit year over year. And let's see what else might be the case. We might invest a little bit differently in marketing. You know, uh, we might have another piece of equipment that we need to purchase now that we've got more uh, customers we're working with, 450 to 563, maybe there's uh, an additional piece of equipment that helps us be more efficient in what we're doing, so there's another payment over the year, you know. So we're going to say that that increases a bit, but year over year, net profit, last year, the last 12 months, this business brought in $84,000 net profit to move the business forward. This year, this coming year, with these areas of focus, really dialed in produces three hundred and twelve thousand dollars again just a massive increase and if we look at if we look at the percentage increase I can pull that up here that is a 72 almost a 73 percent increase year over year in gross profit and the net profit let's see here we go the net profit, bottom line profit, is a 270% increase year over year. Just a massive, massive shift in what, what profits uh, coming into the business. So we're going to keep moving forward in this business. And in the second year, so this is the first year focusing on the right strategies. In this second year of focusing on those same two strategies, continuing, uh, continuing to refine those. We're going to look at those numbers real quick. So we're going to, again, reduce leads. 30 leads a week, down to 25 leads a week, down to 20 leads a week. All right? So it went from 1,500 leads to 1,250 to 1,000 over the year. So let me stop here for a moment. Let's think about how much time it takes to go and do a home visit and build a quick estimate uh, for, a, for a lead, right? Let's say that it is an hour and a half between the travel, the time there, talking with the prospect, and building an estimate and sending it to them. An hour and a half. So if we are able to reduce the number of leads per week from 30 to 20, let's see, 1.5, uh, well, that might be easy math. 1.5 times 10, that's 15 hours a week. If we if we decrease the number of leads we're going on or chasing from 30 down to 20, that means that we have reclaimed 15 hours a week for for that salesperson. If that salesperson is you, that means that you have reclaimed 15 hours a week by shifting uh, shifting what we're doing here. You know, uh, we reduced it by seven and a half hours here, and then another five, 
leads per week drop. That means it's uh, 15 hours per week. That, that is just very important here because what can you do with 15 more hours a week, right, as an owner in the business? So we're going to say that we have another increase in conversion rate, but we're starting to get to where we want to be is 50, 60 percent. So we increase from 45 percent to 55 percent by improving our conversion rate a little bit further. Again, these are the two areas we're focused on. So a thousand leads times 55 percent means that we are working with 550 customers, which is down from the previous year actually. So that's interesting to note. Average number of transactions, let's just say again, we, we add on another property manager or HOA, so that helps bump up our average number of transactions just very slightly. But uh, we do focus again on the average dollar sale. So we went from 1500 to 1800 to 2100 is the average that we're shooting for. So that takes us from 1.113 1, 1, million, 1, 1,113,000, up to 1,328,000. So another nice jump in revenue. The margin, you know, uh, like we said earlier, this increase is going to lead to a slight increase in margin on its own. So what was 55% margin is now 60. Last year, you know, I guess the last year we did 354. The first year of focusing on the strategies this way, we went to 612. And in the second year of focusing on these strategies, we bumped it up to nearly $800,000. $797,000 there, right? We're going to assume another slight increase in fixed expenses. Again, maybe another piece of equipment we're making payments on, uh, some raises for the folks that are in the office, uh, a little bit of additional marketing, you know, what, whatever it is. So this business, the net profit went from last year was 84,000. The first year increases to 312,000. And the second year of focusing on the right areas increases the net bottom line profit up to $466,950. This is a life changing shift in profitability in this business. And it is not an outlandish set of numbers we're looking at. We're just talking about focusing on improvements in a couple of key areas that absolutely are going to produce just the, the most significant numbers here. So let me show the percentages of increase over time. So uh, from last year to the first year, again, 72% increase. And then from the first year to the second year and focusing on these strategies, there's an additional 30% increase there. Uh, last year to the first year, 270% increase. And in year one to year two, and focusing on the right areas, an additional 49% increase in bottom line profit. Again, just, just a huge, huge increase is possible. So, the whole point to this is that you have a lot more control to increase your bottom line profit than you realize. I hope you understand that to be the case. In each of the areas of the five ways to increase profit, leads, conversion rate, average number of transactions, average dollar sale, and profit margin, in each of those five areas, we have a full page, five pages, a full page of 60 to 85 strategies to improve every single one of those numbers in your business. It's, it's, it's what creates the profit increases in every business that we work with. And what happens year over year over year is just insane to watch happen. It's exciting. Uh, we got to start by measuring those numbers though, right? And I can tell you a bunch of different stories. There's, there's a business that I started with and uh, 20, 25 or 26 year old tree service business and they were doing, I think, seven fifty or eight hundred thousand dollars, which is respectable. But like, we're knocking on the door of two million after working together for a little while here now. Um, there's also a grading business that I work with. When we first started working together, they had they did four hundred and ninety-two thousand dollars that first year. The next year, 
the, the, the first year that we were working together, we went from 492 to $2 million, which was a huge jump. And this current year, we're going from $2 million. Right now, as I'm recording this, it's uh, August. And we've already gone past $6 million in that business. So we're going from 492 to $2 million to it looks like we're going towards 7.5 or $8 million for this third year. It's just the increases are significant. Uh, there's a retail business that sells Kubota tractors and Skag lawnmowers and this kind of thing that I work with. When I started working with them, and that's a 45 year old business when I first started working with them. And when I started working with them, they were doing about seven and a half million. A couple of years later, we doubled that. We got them to 15, 16 million dollars in that store, in that business. So it took them 45 years to get to seven and a half million. I respect that, it's not a small number. And by focusing on the right areas in the five ways, we grew that from seven and a half to 15 to 16 million annual. And I think actually uh, this, this year we're looking at getting past 18 million, I think is where they're at this year. So the point is this absolutely happens in businesses when we're focused on the right areas. I want you to be as successful as you want to be in your tree service business. Now these numbers mean that we've got to train our team. We've got to train ourselves as owners to become better managers, to become better salespeople, to become better business owners and leaders. So uh, Action Coach, the organization that I work with, we, have, we offer three primary categories of service. Those three categories of service are business planning, you know, looking at a five-year business plan and breaking that out into, hey, what needs to happen each quarter along the way to make that objective happen. So business planning, there's training. We've got training in a lot of different areas in the business. We can train you as the owner. We can train your teams to be more, much more effective in their areas as well. So there's business planning and training, and then we offer one-to-one -one coaching. You know, some businesses are really in it to win it. The ones that I gave you an example of that grew so significantly, it were enrolled in both training and planning and one-to-one -one coaching. You know, they were like, hey, I want to make this happen. I need to get out of the truck and off the equipment so that I can really run this business as an owner instead of a self-employed uh, operator in the business. Um, if that's you, we need to talk because that's that's what we do is guide businesses like yours to get to that next level, to break through where you're trading your time for money and get way past that so that you've got your time freedom, you've got financial freedom, and you're growing your team and paying them well and really making a pretty awesome impact. So if you're interested or curious about any of that, we should talk more. You know, so, uh, there's, no, there's no obligation to talking further. I'm happy, just like I did here, to just share as much as I can with you. And I protect about five time slots a week to sit down with owners of businesses like you and just talk through, hey, where are you at? Where do you want to go? And I absolutely guarantee you I can give you some clarity on areas to focus on that will make a big difference in your business. There's no obligation to move forward and enroll in any program. We'll still be friends after it. If you decide you want to do it on your own, that's fine. Um, I just, I'm just here to serve and want you to have the best situation possible. So thanks for investing some time with me. And be safe out there. I'll talk to you soon.